This is a shocking, extraordinary magnitude 3.1 earthquake. A shallow earthquake struck New York City greater area today. It shook most of the East Coast. Now, because a picture shows a thousand words, it's worth a thousand words, we're going to go directly to the maps and you'll see the shake map intensity. And uh, as we know, the East Coast earthquakes are felt 10 times more than they are on the West Coast. Let's take a look at the map. This is Saito Berkeley. We will take a look at what's happening in Idaho, but let's take a look at this. Five kilometers depth, it's about uh, three miles down in uh, East Freehold, New Jersey, but uh, we'll take a look at the shape maps. Now it's um, felt, it's been reported to USGS by 7,000 people. And uh, as we know, this is Trenton, New York, New Jersey area. What can I tell you? I just call it New York City because uh, of the fact that you may not know exactly what was hit. Okay, but uh, Trenton, East Freehold, New Jersey, basically the whole greater New York area, the tri-state area has shaken, has been shaking from this. This is the uh, shake map intensity. Now let's go to the um, aerial so you can get a better idea of it. This is the shake map intensity. Now if you extrapolate these lines, they will have shaken Mount uh, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, um, Cape Cod, even Virginia, and I would, I would venture to say even Montreal. I used to live in Montreal, and uh, I've told you many a times, my parents were architects, and uh, they told me that as many uh, levels, as many floors as you have above uh, ground level, let's say you have a seven-story building, you need seven basements underneath to hold that building properly, otherwise it would tilt and crumble. So that's how soft the area is there. A lot of rivers, a lot of uh, water, a lot of uh, freezing during the winter, but it's very soft. So this is a shake map intensity. And as we can see, if you extrapolate these lines, all of this area would have shaken, even though it's a 3.1. Let's go back to this. Boston, New York, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Virginia, Norfolk. Okay, I'm sure that uh, all of Pennsylvania shook with that as well, even though there are some mountains on, uh, you know, the Appalachian Mountains. But all of this area on the coast, as we know, is soft. It's on the coast. And uh, I don't know if we do we have any map of liquefaction. No, it doesn't have liquefaction on here. Okay, do we have historic seismicity? I doubt that. Eh, all right, not too many. Even though we have had, okay, more is coming up. Even though we had had, we have had in the past few months, uh, a lot of um, Rhode Island, Cape Cod has shaken as well, and even in Maine. We know that Maine has, you see this seamount? This is the East Coast seamount extending out in, into the Atlantic Ocean. That is 30 underwater uh, volcanoes. Okay, that's the Mid Atlantic Ridge. And uh, this is the area of uh, Montreal, St. Lawrence River. And this is our today's earthquake. This is it. And if we go to the tectonic summary, since colonial times, people in New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington area, urban corridor, have felt small earthquakes and suffered damage from infrequent larger ones. New York City was damaged in 1737 and 1884, moderately damaging earthquakes strike somewhere in the urban corridor roughly twice a century, and smaller earthquakes are felt, uh, felt roughly every two to three years. Earthquakes in the central and eastern U.S., although less frequent than in the west U.S., are typically felt over a much broader region. East of the Rockies, an earthquake can be felt over an area as much as ten times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the west coast. A magnitude four eastern earthquake typically can be felt as many places as far as 60 miles from where it occurred, and it frequently causes damage near its source. A magnitude 5.5 East U.S. earthquake can be felt as far as 300 miles from where it occurred, and sometimes causes damage as far away as 25 miles. The faults, earthquakes everywhere occur on faults within bedrock, usually miles deep, 
Most bedrock beneath the urban corridor was assembled as continents collided to form a supercontinent about 500 to 300 million years ago, raising the Appalachian Mountains. Most of the rest of the bedrock formed by the supercontinent rifted about, apart about 200 million years ago from where we are now at uh, the northeastern US, the Atlantic Ocean, and Europe. But uh, well-studied plate boundaries like the San Andreas Fault in California, often scientists can determine the name of the specific fault that's responsible for an earthquake. In contrast, east of the Rocky Mountains, this is rarely the case. New York City, Philadelphia, and Wilmington are far from the nearest plate boundaries, which are in the center of the Atlantic Ocean and in the Caribbean. The urban corridor is laced with known faults, but numerous smaller or deeper buried faults remain undetected. Even the known faults are poorly located at earthquake depths, and accordingly few, if any, earthquakes in the urban corridor can be linked to named faults. It is difficult to determine if a known fault is still active and could slip and cause an earthquake. As in most other areas east of the Rockies, the best guide to earthquake hazards in New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington urban corridor is the earthquakes themselves. So here you have it. This is it. It shook this whole area, if not even more. I'm sure all of these areas, even upstate New York, Albany, Wilmington, Washington, D.C., Virginia, have felt it. If you were there, please be very careful. We don't know if they're going to have, if this is a foreshock or an aftershock. Remember that we had this one here just yesterday. Okay? This one, this 3.9 in um, the area between London and Reading. And now let's go look at the shaking intensity. What was the intensity of this? This is it right here. We're going to go into the map so that you can see what exactly was taking place. Okay, here we are. And uh, you'll see some blue here, the blue dots and the green dots. The green is more uh, moderate, very light. Strong to light. Do we have any yellow there? Do we have any orange there? Very strong. Let's see. Okay, we're going to go into it. As you'll see, we even had under south of Washington, Richmond, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, look at that. Okay, we did have Washington shaking. Let's go into um, Atlantic City, Tom's River, this is New Jersey. Of course, Manhattan also shook. New Jersey shook, and look at this. We have a yellow there. Do we have more greens? Yes, we have more greens there. Look at this. Okay, because all this is very low-lying and very, very uh, soft. And the other thing is that you have the naval weapons station right here. Okay, you have a weapons, naval weapons station right there. This is the epicenter, and that's our yellow. We have a lot of green there, moderate shaking, and we have stronger shaking as well, as you can see. Morganville, Old Bridge, and um, all of this has shaken green there as well. All of this is very soft. This is estuary area. Very soft, very soft, very low lying. Okay, this is what worries me here. Okay, Thompson Park, Perth Amboy, Staten Island shook. Okay, uh, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and where's the yellow? Yeah, the green one here. Okay. This year here, uh, this year, or the north of uh, Morristown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Let's go pull out a little bit more. And we have more up here. This one here. There we go. Okay. Poughkeepsie, New York, that as well. Okay, so you, do, you did have stronger shaking here. And to collapse the map so we could see the yellow, what that means. The yellow was strong to light shaking. Okay? So all you there, there please be very careful. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. 
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.